Hey guys, it's me Robin, Ars Island Crafts. Today I'm going to be making a pillow for my son Robbie who graduated this past year. And I'm using his scraps left over from his shirts from a quilt I made. So his pillow will match his quilts. This is going to be just a basic throw pillow. He likes to have one behind his back when he's sitting in bed and stuff. This fabric, leftover shirt fabric, I went ahead and used the calculator tape process of sewing the little scraps of his shirt onto the calculator tape paper. And I just went ahead and just stitched a whole bunch on, figuring, well, that's about what I need. I just have this a little bit left to take off, so let's go ahead and take that off. Remember, it's just easy. Hold your thumb or your hands or wherever over by where the thread is so you don't pull on your stitches. Give it a little gentle tug, run your finger under it. You'll find your own way of doing it. It's not, as you see, it just pops off real easy. And if you have a little piece that's stuck, just give it a gentle pull. All right, not only am I using the scraps from my son Robbie's shirts, but this is an old Rugrat Tommy pillow of his. It has some stains on it, but it's it's washed. I cleaned it recently, and I went ahead, and I, I just thought it'd be nice to use an old pillow form that he had growing up and he loved as the pillow form for his pillow. This pillow is 16 inches. This is basically a 16-inch pillow form. You measure it from seam to seam. They can be a little bit bigger based on even though the fabric itself is 16 inches, depending on how well it's stuffed, it could be a little bit bigger, or a little bit smaller. So this is the pillow form. And this is going to be the front of the pillow. Before we get to the front, we're gonna be making an envelope style pillow. So let me show you what I did for the back. Both of these fabrics were in Robbie's original quilt. So I decided to go ahead and just use what scraps I had left over to make the back of his pillow. This pillow is going to be a totally scrappy pillow and I'm going to be using everything from stash so there'll be nothing new to purchase. With an envelope style pillow, your back of your pillow will overlap and then you slide your pillow in through here. So there's no zippers needed, no buttons, nothing like that. Now I like to have my back sturdy. A lot of patterns We'll have you just make one layer of fabric and you fold a little hem under and stitch a line down that. But I like to have two layers of fabric because it makes the back of the pillow sturdier. So since I have a 16 inch pillow form and with a quarter inch seams all the way around, I'm going to need to start out with, my finished product is gonna to have to be 16 and a half inches. Now, these numbers are just for a 16 inch pillow form. They're easy to adjust for a different size. Let's say you were making a 20 inch pillow form. You're going to have a piece of fabric at the end that's going to be 20 inches. So for my back, I decided that I needed a piece of fabric that is 16 and a half inches by 20 and a half. Now the way I came up with that number The way I came up with that number is my pillow form is 16 inches. I'm going to have the extra half inch for a seam allowance. I like to have I like to have my pillow cover fit nice and snug, so I didn't want to go any more than the 16 and a half. Some people add an inch to it, but a half inch is plenty for me because I like it snug. Then you need to decide You need to decide for your pillow how much of an overlap you want for your envelope back. For the 16 inch pillow, I decided about a four, four and a quarter inch overlap between the two fabrics will be plenty. That gives you enough room to hold it in, but if you went to five, six, seven inches, it would be hard to get the pillow in and out because this way you can take your cover off and wash it. So the larger the pillow form, the larger the overlap you're going to have. So if I were making a 20 inch pillow form, I would probably want this overlap here to be more of a six inch overlap than the four inches. 
So after I cut out my two identical pieces that are once again 20 and a half inches by 16 and a half inches, I folded them in half and ironed them. Then I just sewed a stitch down just to give it some structure and to hold this section together because there's going to be a lot of force tugging and pulling on this area of your pillow. So there's our back. Now at the front, I thought I'd have a little bit of fun. I thought I would take this fabric and have it go in strips in different directions and angles on the front of the pillow. Because the ticker tape I use is three and a quarter inches, it's a little bit wide for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this strip in half. So the first thing I need to do is decide where I wanna put my first piece. One of the things you have to consider is you don't want to put anything too close to the edge because you're going to need this seam when you sew this blue to this. Because we could do this as an applique right on top, but I'm going to be cutting the fabric and making it, making it all one part of one fabric. So what I plan on doing is I plan on cutting it instead of appliquing it on top, which you could do. And then I will have it all as one flat piece of fabric. If you were to applique, you can just stitch right along each side of your fabric strip or you can fold it under depending on whether or not you want to keep a raw edge. So my starting fabric is basically about 16 and a half inches. It's probably a little bit off square. I just wanted to make sure I had enough room. I know once I start cutting into this and adding fabric, it's going to get wider and then I can go ahead and trim it down, which is another good reason to leave a nice section along the sides. We're not going to change the height, so this is going to stay at 16 and a half inches, but the width is going to grow. So I'm just going to pick a piece of fabric, decide I need, oh, about that much. I can look and see which fabrics I have and choose my piece based on that. Like I really like this green fabric, so I could make sure I incorporate that. Or I can just flip over to another piece that has that fabric. So since I'm cutting on the diagonal, I'm going to make sure I have some past this end and some past the top and then just lop it off. Keeping my main fabric out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and slice this. I could be very particular and make sure I get it in exactly in half, or I can just slice it any way I want. I think just so I can see the seams and know where they are, I'm gonna flip it and cut it from the back. I am just going to lay my ruler down, say that looks good, nice and slow, and there I go. I now have two strips and as you can see they're both not the same size one of them's almost two inches and the other one's an inch and a half but like I said I'm okay with that so then I need to decide where on my blue fabric I'm going to cut to add that piece in I can lay it out and say that looks good and it does, so I'm just gonna go ahead, make sure my ruler's just a little bit, a little bit wonky. If I go too much, I'm not gonna have room for too many of my other, what I'm picturing these in my mind is, these are like crazy birch trees for me. Have you ever seen a birch tree? They're like black and white and the bark's all in different designs and stuff like that. So this is kind of a fun version of that. I'm going to go ahead and say, that looks good. Slice it. Now I have to take this over to the sewing machine. And what I'll do is I'll lay this piece over and I'll sew. And if I'm paying attention, the best way to put it through the machine is when all your seams are going down. So that might be one thing to keep in mind while you're cutting. And then after I have this sewn, then I'll take this piece 
and sew it to the colorful shirt strap. To the colorful shirt scraps. That's a tongue twister. Now you've seen me sew before, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this over and sew both pieces and I'll be right back. Okay, there it is all sewn in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and iron it. And when I do, this blue material is a little bit sturdier fabric than the t-shirt and then the uh, dress shirt fabric. So it wants to iron in this way. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is let my seams go ahead and go to this strip of uh, shirt fabric. Normally with all the seams, I would stitch it open, but a lot of times it's nice just to let it go the way it wants. Plus it'll have that extra strength when we go ahead and quilt this. And there you go, one little piece added. Now if you notice, if you notice all the way up here at the top, my blue's not quite lined up with the next section of blue because I didn't go right to the end of this fabric. It would have been easier to line up if I'd have gone straight to the end. So a good tip is to maybe make your pillow front a little bit longer. So if you're doing a 16 and a half, maybe go 17 and a half, 18 inches. So at the end, when we trim the top and bottom, we'll even it all out and then it'll be fine. My next thought is, do I want to use that same half of this fabric and put it into the next section, or do I want to get something new? Now, we have these two are both at the top. I could flip it. Hmm. That's funny because both ends have the start in the same fabric. Almost. So, if I flipped it, I would still end up with some blues together. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get a whole new strip and cut another piece. I'm just going ahead and cut it a lot longer in between two seams than what I need. Make sure my good pillow top's out of the way. I don't want to cut on that. Now, if you cut it too long, it'll be easy to trim later. And if you cut it too short, you can always just sew extra pieces together and you'll be fine. This time I think I'm gonna go a little bit wider on the bottom and a little narrower at the tip and see how that shows up in our pillow cover. See, so when you come hang with me, while I'm trying to show you how I do things, it's not necessarily a tutorial. It's more of a come sew with me and I'll show you how I figured out how to work some things. Let me just trim this piece off down at the bottom because it's flopping around and it keeps getting in my way. So I'm going to trim it past the blue and just take that little piece. We'll save it for something else. Because while working with scrap projects, once you start working with them, you'll realize scraps seem to multiply. No matter how much you use, you're always trimming off another piece and having more. I can use that piece for a crumb quilt. So this time, I don't want all my trees, is what I'm basically calling them, leaning this way. I like to have some going this way. So I think... Do I want one to cross, maybe? We can have it cross over. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to slice through my uh, pillow cover, but I'm also going to sli slice through my tree up here making sure I don't go too close to that corner. Sometimes it gets a little scary. Okay, so then, trees are wider at the bottom than they are at the top, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew that in this way. As I was sewing this piece, I was all set to come over here and tell you not to cross your trees because I really thought that this section was going to come off a whole lot wonkier than it is. But it came out pretty good. So now I need to cut for my next one. This is where you get to be creative and you get to use, you know, whatever judgment or imagination you choose. 
Do you want all your trees to be going in the same direction? Do you want them to cross? Do you want things to look all symmetrical? Or do you kind of fly by the seat of your pants and just let it wing? So I'm taking into consideration my four corners. So I need to make sure that I don't go and leave too small of a seam allowance over here. So when I trim up, because as it is right now, my block is 17 and a quarter. So we already know we're going to need to be trimming that down to 16 and a half. So I need to make sure I leave a good inch on the side. I don't want to put two tree seams right next to each other. So I wouldn't want to go this way or right on top of it. So I need to be careful of where my trees are and where my corners are. I think this guy, we're going to let another one lean this way. Kind of going to go a little bit close up at the top, but not too much at the bottom. And then my last one, I'll go ahead and let it go that way. That feels good. See, if you sew like this, it's freeform sewing. You can, you know, you make it however it works for you. Now I have my leftovers from my original strip that I'm just going to go ahead And I'm going to add it here, but I'm going to try to keep my blue a little further away from this blue so that these all aren't right on top of each other. I'm using a standard quarter inch seam allowance all through this as I'm stitching it. I just went ahead and ironed this piece. These two I sewed both sides and then ironed it, so I want to see if it's a little easier to stitch if we iron it first. Let's go find out. One more helpful tip before I go, let's see if trimming this part even will make it easier to stitch down the next section. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it even with the last section even though it's off by the first one. This way it'll be a little bit longer versus shorter. Let's trim that guy off too. You see, I put myself a little helpful registration mark on the back. And I know that that was in my upper right hand corner. So as I get this piece of fabric, since it's the same on both sides, I don't get it all flipped around and I know exactly. You could put a registration mark all across the top with chalk on the back. So you don't get your pieces mixed up. And then I'm just gonna go ahead, now that I know that this is even, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this together. Okay, I think adding, trimming it up at the top and ironing one side, sewing, sewing, and then ironing, and then sewing and ironing so instead of doing it all at once was very helpful. So that's a very good helpful tip to do one side and iron, do the other side and iron, and don't do them all at the same time. And to trim up the top edge as you go so it'll be easier to stitch the next pieces on. Now I've got room for one more piece. I want to leave my inch on the side, but now I want to fill in this empty space here. I could go totally crazy and cut this way, but I'm not feeling that crazy today. So I think today I think I'll have this one going almost straight, not too cattywonker, only off by a couple degrees. And then go ahead and slice it through here. See that piece? That one's only a little bit wonky this time. Maybe I'll take my other half that's fat on one side and skinny on the other, and this time, do I like it upside down? I don't think I like the fat part at the top. I really I think I do prefer it down at the bottom because they feel more like trees to me this way. And I think if I slide it down a little, then I won't have this green with this green because I've slid it down some. It won't be as wide and the colors won't be the same. So I think that's what I'm going to do.
Okay, here we go. Here's our pillow cover. Now what I need to do is I need to get a piece of batting that's going to be the size of this fabric right here. I'm going to go ahead and quilt it. And the way I'm going to quilt it is I'm just going to take some dark blue thread and just quilt down inside the blue next to each tree. When it comes to the one that crossed, I'm not going to sew across. I'm just going to go ahead and quilt up through here and then follow this one. Quilt that V and once again down here and up through that V. So that'll give me several lines of quilting. You could, you can just do a whole bunch of straight lines or you can do diagonal, but I don't want to cross over my trees, so I'm just going to go ahead and stitch basically in the ditch right along each section. I don't plan on putting any fabric behind my batting like you would for a standard quilt. This piece isn't big enough, but what I'm basically going to do is just lay it on there and quilt it. My machine, it'll quilt through the machine fine. I've done this several times in the quilt as you go without putting a back on it and it works out well. Okay, you can basically see because I ended up using black thread because the dark blue I had was too shiny and it would have stood out too much on the front of my pillowcase, which I didn't want. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good iron and then I'll show you how we're gonna trim it up. I do not have a 16 and a half inch square ruler. My largest one is 12 and a half. So I'm gonna use the lines on my mat to square this up. I'll just start by finding the lowest point here on the bottom. And trimming that off. Then I will put this down on my my zero line down here in the center of my mat so I can see the numbers on both sides. So I have numbers. I have my numbers here and my numbers here. And with this on zero, I'll just go ahead and find 16 and a half and trim that up there. Sometimes it's easier just to spin your mat around and go from a different side. Then I'll take this side and I'm going to, then on this side, I chose this side because it has the least amount of blue. So I'm going to trim this up the least amount and then anything extra I'll take off of this side. So I'll have a little here and a little here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lines, the black lines on my ruler, and I'm going to line it up with this bottom of my pillow cover because I know. I know that this bottom has a straight edge because I just trimmed it up. So when I line it up there, I just make sure I have blue fabric. After I line it up, I just make sure I have blue fabric on this side of my ruler. Whichever is my smallest amount is here and my largest is here. So I'm just going to go right to the very edge at this side. Make sure I have my number one, my zero point down here. Take the spot that I just had, put that on zero. And once again, I'm going to trim up at this end at 16 and a half. But it's going to be easier for me to spin it this way. Sorry, I bumped into you. Now when it comes to scraps, you have options. You can still save the pieces you cut off. Like some of these small pieces, it's a lot of blue, I won't bother. These little pieces of shirt, yeah, I could put them in a crumb, but I have plenty of those. So I'm gonna toss those. But when it comes to larger pieces like this, not only am I gonna save this blue fabric, but I'm also gonna save this batting because I can put this inside a, um, a keychain wristlet or a handle of a bag or something like that and I'll be able to use this. The same thing with these. 
I know for the things that I do, as long as I have a one inch strip, then I can use it. So I just take off the pieces of fabric before I store it. Sometimes I pull off the thread, sometimes I leave it and I deal with it later. It all depends on how I'm rushed for time and what kind of mood I'm. But since I have you guys to sit here and talk to, I'll go ahead and take some off. So these, I have my batting, I have a large, anything larger than say about six or eight inches, I keep in one container and all these strips, I keep in a separate one. So when it comes time to do one of those small projects, I know exactly where to go to find my scraps. Okay, so here is my pillow cover, the front of it, and my two back pieces. Now I have to decide, since I use two separate colors, I have to decide, do I want the blue on top, or do I want this khaki gold? Because whichever one you put on top is going to be the predominant color. I think I kind of like it with the blue. The blue is a sturdier fabric also. And this outer piece is the one that's going to get most of the work. So I think I'll go like that. So the next step would be to sew the backs to your actual pillow. Now you're going to have right sides together. I have the face of my pillow up. Remember I had to trim my pillow just a little bit smaller than these pieces so there's going to be some hanging over. But I lined it up to the best of my ability. Everything's basically even. Now I have these wonder clips. So instead of pins, Oh, look at that. See, see my extra there? I think what I'll do to make the sewing process easier, since I have this much extra on both sides, I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. This way, when I go to pin it or wonder clip it and sew it, I know exactly where I'm going to be. Everything's going to be lined up and I don't have to worry. So I told you working with me is a process. Working with me, you can learn all the things not to do. When you watch my videos, it's probably best to watch it all the way through and then go ahead and do your project because I'll have a lot of tips and tricks from when I mess up. Now, if I were to follow a pattern, I could follow it fine and it wouldn't be all this, but I'm just basically kind of winging it as I go. So now I'm going to take my wonder clips and I'm just going to clip a few. I want to make sure I have the corners clipped. Sometimes it's easier just to move your mat. Now when it comes to where we're overhanging from where the overlap is in the envelope style pill in the back. I like to make sure I get some extra pins in there. Or clips, whatever the case may be. So anyone who uses these, do you just kind of stick them on? Or are you like me where you have to have all of the red color sticking up? And all the clear color going down? Go ahead and let me know down below in the comments if I'm the only one that's crazy like this. I'm not really OCD, but for certain things like this, I don't know, it just kind of shows. Now I'm going to go ahead and stitch all the way around this. But when it comes to the parts where these two pieces overlap, I'm going to stitch all the way around it, but I'm going to stitch on these sides a couple times because this is where you're going to have the most strain when you're putting the pillow in and out to wash it. Well, at least I hope my son takes the cover off to wash it occasionally. I guess it depends on how he uses it. But anyways, I do one stitch and then I go ahead right next to it and I do another stitch on both sides because this is where we're going to turn it right side out. It's not going to matter. 
Oh, you know what I just did? It's fine. Because when we were looking at this, and we decided we liked the blue, I have to fix this. I like it when I catch a mistake before I actually do it. When we turn this right side out, this is going to be on the inside. So whatever color, if you have two separate colors, whatever color you want on the top, you have to lay that down first. Because now we're looking at the inside of it. Did anyone else catch that before I did? Raise your hand. I'm just happy I... Well, now I wouldn't have restitched it. I would have just said it's perfectly fine because in reality... It's just a preference of what color you want. It's it's not going to matter. If you have two blue pieces back here, it's not going to matter top for bottom. It'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to go stitch all the way around it, stitch down both of these sides where the flaps are twice, and then I'll show you how we turn it around. Okay, I went ahead and I stitched around everywhere. And you can see where I added some extra lines of stitching. You could stitch right on the same line, and some people do. I don't know, this just seems to work for me, and I'm fine with it this way. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to trim these corners up a little so we don't have too much bulk when we turn our corners out. So you just kind of stay away from your stitch line. You just kind of angle cut it. reduce some of that bulk. I just went ahead and I used about a generous quarter inch seam allowance when I was stitching this. You can go more for the half inch if you'd like, but make sure you take that into account when you first start cutting your fabric and trimming your pillowcase up, your pillow cover up. Okay, moment of truth, now we're going to turn it and we just put our hands in, grab a corner, flip it out. Stick my hand in each corner, push it up with my finger a little. Now you can be brave and use the tips of your scissors to point out, push out your corners. I'm not that brave. I have my stuffing stick that came with my fiber fill and my plastic crochet hook. These are the ones I try to choose. The crochet hook will give you a nice rounded corner. I hope I don't lie, but I've yet to pop through a corner using this crochet hook. Because you've got two layers of fabric here, fabric and batting here. So just gently give them a little push. You don't want all that fabric stuck up in the corner. Now if I, if I want to kind of make sure it's out all the way. I'll put it in and I'll give it a little twisting motion and it'll pop out anything left. Some people take their seam ripper and they can pop it in there and pull the fabric out. I don't know, it just seems to be my luck. I tend to rip the fabric. There we go, one pillow cover. Let's put the pillow in. Okay, so it's going to take a bit of wrangling. You kind of squish your pillow, shove it up in there, you take your flap, and you just wrangle your pillow in there. Oh, and sound effects are helpful. Urgh, get in the corner. So, yep, I just take, and I take my, I hold my corner of my pillow, and I shove it into the corner of my case. I get all the little loose threads. Make sure this is just tucked in. There we go. One pillow. So what do you think? Now, some people 
don't like the way it curves in and it has piggy tails on the end. And some people don't care. A lot of times when you get a pillow from the store, it's going to be that way. Now, I put a little extra stuffing in the pillow. Because I know my son is going to sit on it and lay on it. And it's going to squish down a little. And then it's going to fill in this curve and it's not going to bother me. Plus, when it's sitting like this, I don't know, it's got little feet and little ears. It's okay. I'm fine with it. When you sew, when you're on the inside and you're sewing your top to your back, if you sew a little curve, if you go ahead and do a little curve stitch here versus going to the corner and pivoting, you'll also knock out this pointy little ear part. Let me tell you, my son Robbie is not going to notice. I'm not even sure he'll notice right away that they're his shirts. <laughs> he, he's not... Uh, He's not the most observant kid sometimes. Oh, he's not the most observant young adult sometimes. But clean it all up. Handy dandy lint roller. So there you go. What do y'all think? Another way to use up your scraps. Now, you could just use straight fabric in here if you want. And if you don't want to make a pillow, you can go ahead and just make a quilt square the same way. My next untutorial sew along with me is I made some Mickey Mouse ears for a friend of the family. So if you've ever wanted to make those stuffed Mickey Mouse ears that are on headbands, go ahead and like and subscribe down below and YouTube will let you know when the next video is up. You guys have a great day. Bye!